What is going on everybody? This is Yesher at that and today I am reviewing The Hot King by Josiah Bancroft. The Hot King is the third book in the Books of Babel series and the first two books have been very good. The third book does not disappoint. Uh, in my opinion it's probably the best book that Bancroft wrote yet. So yeah, um, I'm gonna do this review by starting with the story, then I'll go on with my likes and dislikes and give you my score for the book. And after that I'm gonna talk about a few spoilers that some of you might not want to hear. So let's start with the story. In the beginning Sendlin, Thomas Sendlin, uh, gets sent to the Ringdom of Pelthia on the orders of the Queen because she fears an uprising and she wants him to investigate. Thomas Sandin is all alone in the city in this very weird ringdom where people just care about partying and fashion it seems like and he infiltrates an arena where hearts battle each other for entertainment purposes basically. Now there's a huge distraction here because Sandin's wife Maria who he's basically looking for for the past two books is in this city in this ringdom and well she is actually a public figure so little by little he scrapes some information together and he actually pieces together her, her story of course he doesn't know if it's true but that's what he does and he shouldn't investigate her he shouldn't pursue that for his own safety but as you can guess, Sandlin can't really help it. Now meanwhile, Voletta and Irene, who we also know from the last books, uh, also infiltrate Palfia and they pose as a noble lady and her handmaid and try to make contact with Maria. But I won't spoil, I promise, so I won't say anything more. The story does get very intense pretty fast and once it picks up steam it just keeps going. So I really enjoyed that part, uh, which brings me to my likes. Um, I really like the story, as I said. I can't go into it too much right now, but we see more than just the ringdom. We get to know some new characters, some interesting characters. We get to know a new ringdom. Well, one of the things I really like about this book are the different ringdoms. They're so creative. Um, Palfia is just amazing with these people crazy about fashion, uh, crazy about uh, public appearance and just a very strange city with super strange people but this leads to some of the awesome comedic moments that Bancroft manages to pack into the book and I just really really enjoy that. I think the ringdoms really give a lot of possibility for world building and it's just such a unique and such a cool concept. Yeah, I, I'm I like it. Another thing that I really enjoy in this book and in the last books as well obviously is the prose which is very unique and just very good. I really like reading these books. Uh, they feel like they feel very different from other books you read and yeah I think I saw somewhere that it it's almost seems like an instant classic and it, it does feel like a classic fantasy book. I also enjoyed the overall themes and settings, uh, the investigation by Senlin, him trying to be kind of undercover, uh, well, the later on it starts to get a bit more into the hordes and like their treatment, I guess, their position and, well, I won't really go into it, as I said, no spoilers, but I, th I just found the overall themes very interesting. And the last thing, the characters, they're just so good. Uh, they're very unique, uh, they do feel very alive, they all have their own concerns and it's just, I just really enjoy them. I really enjoy reading about them and I really, I realized in this book at one point that I actually really care about them. So yeah, it's just really, it's very interesting for me to read about them. And in this book we actually don't have a single point of view. Um, in the first book I think we had a single point of view. So this book is actually different again in that we have multiple points of views but not like in the same time frame. So we might see the view of Senlin and then 
we might see the view of Boletta, but from the same time frame that Sendin had. So we see some events happening twice, I guess. Which brings me to my only dislike that that really confused me. Um, but overall, my score for the book is a 9 out of 10. In my opinion, just a really phenomenal book. If you're craving an original fantasy series and haven't read these books yet, then really go ahead and read them. If you aren't sure and the series isn't finished yet and the last book is not released yet, wait for the last book. But I'm pretty sure that the last book is going to be released and honestly the series is worth reading. For me it feels like this might be one of the best recent fantasy series if the last book holds up, which I'm sure it will. But yeah, um, We'll see. That's just my opinion. I really enjoy these books. So, uh, I'm gonna go into some spoilers right now, so turn off the video if you didn't read the book yet, because the first spoiler is already a bomb. And uh, I want to talk about Voletta, who meets this prince and befriends him, and even though he's kind of weird and we know that he's done some crazy stuff in the past and even had to leave the ringdom because of it, so, in the end, it all culminates in this moment where she is trying to speak to Maria and she actually manages to, but then he ambushes her and, uh, well, he obviously has something in mind and she tries to fight him and he just shoots her. And I was, at that moment, I was sure that she's dead. The writing just made it seem certain that she wouldn't survive. For me, it seemed that way and it was not really out of the blue but it was so quick and it felt very just i think it was like half a page of just uh he shoots her and she's on the ground and she's bleeding and that's it chapter is over and for me that was so unique like that nothing like that happened in the book before now obviously we know that she survived we don't know how her condition is and what's gonna happen to her because they use this, uh, I don't actually know what it's called, this weird fuel from the Sphinx red stuff that also powers the devices. I don't know, well, I, I don't know. But anyways, uh, I really enjoyed the scene and it really made me appreciate the characters because I actually care for the characters. Which is also why I really enjoyed the fight in the end aboard the ship where you can really tell like everybody has their own qualities and <laughs> everybody, not everybody can fight but uh, some of them are crazy monsters like this uh, red hand who, well, yeah, crazy. And also just the epicness of the fight, like the ship getting shot down in the end and then just going back up and completely destroying the harbor. Is it a harbor? Like the sky harbor? Well, anyways epic stuff like when the ship comes back up. I was pretty sure that that's possible but yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> and of course the most important character is Senlin who meets his old friend that he met in the baths and they both get sent on the black trail and get sent to meet the hot king who we now know is someone we met in the last book in another ringdom and oh what's his name? Uh, I'm too stupid right now. It's been it's been three weeks. Um, what's his name? I don't know anymore. I forgot. But uh, we definitely met him last book, and he is this weird and crazy guy who wants every heart to blacken out the books, and yeah. And then he created this device. Well. I really don't know what to think about it. It seems like this weird steampunk thing again <laughs> that in these books is kind of a theme and I'm curious because I can't really imagine it's like a centipede with cannons. I'm not really sure what it's gonna do but um, I'm very curious what's gonna happen with Sendin because he poses as a hod who really regrets what he was doing before and well, yeah, let's, I'm, I'm just very curious uh, about Volada, about Senlin, about Edith as well. And another huge point is that Senlin now believes that his wife didn't love him anymore. 
meanwhile she has a kid and that's why she can't love him anymore and the kid was by Sandlin now when the huge cliffhanger was uh, I think in the first book was that she was pregnant I obviously assumed that it's the kid of the Duke but it's not it's actually Sandlin's kid and they're hiding it so oh that's kind of crazy I mean it's not really a twist we knew that she has a kid but well now he thinks about Edith and Meanwhile, his wife actually wants to be together with him, so that's going to be have to resolve in the last book, which I'm just very curious about now. So yeah, that concludes my review, I guess. I don't think I have anything more to say. If you've read the book, let me know what you thought in the comments below. And uh, yeah, if you liked the video, make sure to drop a like, maybe sub to this channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye!